Welcome back. So in today's module, we're going to be talking about the nervous system. So let's get into it. So the nervous system senses, interprets, and issues commands as a response to the environment. Neurons are basic nerve cells, conduct information electrically along incoming axon fibers, a long extension of a nerve cell body that sends impulses and outgoing dendrites, a shorter branch extension that receives the stimulus. So if we look over here, this is a neuron cell. So we have a cell body with dendrites over here. We have a synapse and we have an axon. And the direction of action potential is coming from, so this, if you can see, it's a little faded out, but this is a, another nerve cell. This is the synapse from another nerve cell. So it's passing along the action potential to the dendrite. So it starts at the dendrite of the cell and it goes down the axon to the synapse. These are myelin sheets. These are going to protect the cells. We'll talk about those a little bit later. So when a neuron is stimulated past a necessary threshold, messages are sent across the plasma membrane of neurons through a process called action potential. So again, that's that electrical signal getting stimulated. Communication between axon terminals and neurons is done chemically using neurotransmitters that are released into a synapse or junction between neurons. So that is over here. So we can see that the presynaptic neuron is sending these neurotransmitters down through the chemical synapse. So that's the space here, sending these neurotransmitters, these little circular dots to the neurotransmitter at attached to the receptor. So it sends these neurotransmitters to the receptors into the postsynaptic neuron. Information is converted along the nervous system, both electrically and chemically. So we saw that here, here's the electrical, here is the chemical. And synapses transmit information using chemicals called neurotransmitters. And these can be acetylcholine, dopamine, noradrenaline. These stimulations occur in sequence from the stimulation point of one neuron to its contact with another neuron. And at the point of contact called the chemical synapse, so we saw that over here, a substance is released that stimulates or inhibits the action of the adjoining cell. So again, this cell, it could be blocking something or it could be creating something. And this network fans out across the body and forms the framework of the nervous system. So let's go over different types of neurons. So there are three general functional types of neurons. We have a sensory neuron, which is going to transmit signals from the central nervous systems. Remember, that's the brain and spinal cord from the sensory receptors associated with touch, pain, temperature, hearing, sight, smell, and taste. There are motor neurons which transmit signals from the central nervous system to the rest of the body, such as signaling muscles or glands to respond. And there are interneurons or relay neurons which signal, transmit signals between neurons. So a neuron consists of three basic parts. We kind of went over this in the previous slide, but you have your cell body or soma, which contains a nucleus of the neuron. So you can see that here. This is the cell body. There is an axon, which transmits the impulses away from the body, insulated by oligodendrocytes and the meslin sheets with gaps known as node of Revere and myelin sheets insulate the neurons and it terminates at the synapse. So the axon, so we can see it actually goes this way if we're looking at uh, this specific cell, it's the yellow. So, uh, you know, we have the cell body here, we have the axon that goes here. And if you remember in the previous uh, slide on this axon, you have the myelin sheets. You can actually see it here, the myelin sheets. And that is going to insulate the neurons. 
and then we have the dendrites so these little things down at the bottom receive impulses from sensory receptors or interneurons and transmit them towards the cell body it has thin branched processes of neurons whose main function is to receive incoming signals these are the three types of neurons so this is what a sensory neuron looks like this is what a relay neuron looks like and this is what a motor neuron looks like so the central nervous system this is going to consist of the brain and spinal cord it controls thought and muscle movement and it has efferent neurons or motor neurons and afferent neurons or sensory neurons then there is the brain and the brain consists of the hind brain which includes the med medulla oblongata cerebellum and the pons so that's going to be over here you can see the pons medulla oblongata this is the hind brain the midbrain integrates sensory signals and orchestrates responses to these signals an important part of vision and hearing and the pons comes between the midbrain and the medulla oblongata information is sent across the pons from the cerebrum to the medulla and the cerebellum so you can see the midbrain right here and the pons here and the medulla oblongata back there the forebrain includes the cerebellum the thalamus and the hypothalamus we can see this whole thing is the forebrain and the blood-brain barrier separates blood from cerebral spinal fluid so looking into the brain a little bit more we have the cerebral cortex this is a thin layer of gray matter covering the cerebrum and it performs the brain's most sophisticated functions so the cerebrum performs the brain most sophisticated functions the which is this whole thing up here there is the frontal lobe which is located on this pink area and it controls the planning reasoning imaging area of the brain this is where executive functioning and decision making largely occurs and it's responsible for judgment sort short-term memory and working memory and the way i like to remember the frontal lobe is that when we see patients that have damage to their frontal lobe you can actually have personality changes impulse control issues this is kind of the area of the brain that helps with your reasoning kind of like your conscience right it's what helps you make decisions what's right and what's wrong so if there's damage to that frontal lobe it can be very problematic and lead to a lot of behavioral issues there's also the parietal lobe which is this kind of light purple it's located slightly towards the back of the brain and at the top of the head and it's responsible for sensory input as well as spatial positioning of the body there is the occipital lobe back here which is this green which controls visual information nerves from the eyes enter directly into this lobe it's located at the back of the head there is the sensory cortex near the motor cortex so we can see that down here this dark pink and there is also the motor cortex which is going to be this darker green there is the temporal lobe which controls speech located at the left and right sides of the brain so if you think your your temples right your temporal lobe is right there on the left and right sides and it's responsible for auditory input processing and outputs so it's right here there is the brain stem would be down here which controls breathing blood pressure digestion heartbeat and swallowing input from the body is sent to the brain via the brain stem that's why any injury to the brain stem can be really problematic sometimes like you know if you see in movies and they like snap people's necks and stuff like the brain stem if you have injury to that you can actually stop breathing and your blood pressure can drop and the cerebellum which is down here plays a role in the processing and storing of implicit memories developed during classical conditioning or learning techniques there and then if we look down here 
the primary visual cortex is to the back, the primary audio cortex is on the sides. In the prefrontal cortex, you have Broca's area. And Broca's area means that you, if you have injury to that area, you will be able to understand other people, but you will have very limited speech. You may only be able to say one or two words. And then there is Wernikoff's area, which is going to be around this circle and that causes you to speak kind of jumbled word salad that other people cannot understand. There are also 12 cranial nerves. So the first one is olfactory, that is in the nose. There is optic two is sensory in your eye. There are ocular motor, so this is all eye muscle movements except those supplied by four and six. You have trochanter motor, which is superior oblique muscle, abductin motor, which is external rectus muscle. You have your trigeminal sensory, which is your face, sinus, teeth, uh, motor muscles of mastication, so that's um, like chewing. You have facial motor hypoglossal motor, intermediate motor, sensory, which is uh, interior part of your tongue or soft palate. You have an inner ear. You have glossopharyngeal. You have a vagus motor, so your heart, lungs, bronchi, GI tract, and an accessory motor. So you don't need to memorize all of these nerves. You will need to memorize them in nursing school, but for the T's, you should not need to memorize all of these, but you should know that there are 12 cranial nerves. And all of these nerves are in, you know, this is the brain and you have all 12 cranial nerves. So the central nervous system with the spinal cord. So the spinal cord is encased in a bony structure of the vertebrae, which protects and supports it. Its nervous tissue functions include mainly limb movement and external organ activity and major nerve functions ascend and descend from the spinal cord to the brain. So we can see blue is the peripheral nervous system and the red is the central nervous system and all of those nerves come through the spinal cord tract protected by the vertebrae and up to the brain. All right, so the peripheral nervous system. I'm going to put myself there. All right, so connected to the central nervous system consists of somatic voluntary nerves and automatic involuntary nerves. Somatic nervous system is the five senses in the voluntary movement of the skeletal muscle. Efferent muscles bring signals from the central nervous system to the sensory organs and the muscles. Afferent muscles bring signals from the sensory organs and muscles to the central nervous system. Involuntary movements, which are known as reflex arcs, this stimuli is detected by sensory receptors and messages are sent along a sensory afferent neuron to one or more interneurons in the spinal cord. The interneurons transmit the message to the motor efferent neuron and carries the messages to the correct effector effector muscle. Voluntary movement occurs by an electrical signal sent from the brain to the motor neurons in the spinal cord. The motor neurons relay the signal to the muscle. At the muscle, the electrical signal gets transformed into release of the common chemical neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Acetylcholine stimulates excitability of the muscle tissue to contract. Visceral nervous system consists of all the nerves that relay information between the central nervous system and the visceral organs, and the autonomic nervous system consists of the sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system, and enteric nervous system. So I really like this chart because it shows us you have your whole nervous system of your body, and then you have your peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. So remember, the central nervous system was the brain and spinal cord. And the peripheral nervous system is all the other nerves. It is consisting of three different categories. We have the autonomic nervous system, which is the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, and the enteric nervous system, which we're going to talk about in a second. And then you also have your somatic nervous system 
and your visceral nervous system. All right. Then if we look down here, this is just how the senses is transported in the body. So you have a receptor on your finger, you touch something, say it's hot, it goes along that sensory neuron through your spinal cord. This is the vertebrae through the spinal cord. It then goes out another mo out a motor neuron, so it comes in on a sensory, but the signal goes out the motor neuron to the effector muscle and makes it contract. So you touch something hot, you pull your arm away. That is how it is moving throughout your body. So now the peripheral nervous system, the autonomic nervous system. So remember there's three types. We're going to go over all of them. So there is the sympathetic nervous system. This activates the fight or flight response during a threat or perceived danger. So I like to think of this as sympathetic is kind of like sympathy, you're sensitive, you're emotional, you're alert, right? So sympathetic nervous system, you're alert. When we were cavemen back in the day, the system was created so that we're hanging out under a tree and then we see a lion and all of a sudden we're ready to go, we're ready to run, we're ready to fight. So I should move this over so we can kind of see. So when your sympathetic nervous system is activated, your pupils are going to dilate, you're going to have an inhibition in saliva, your heart is going to accelerate your heartbeat, your lungs are going to the bronchi you're going to dilate because it's preparing for needing more oxygen. That's why your um, heart rate goes up as well because it's pumping that blood throughout your body, thinking that it needs to oxygenate those muscles. Your stomach inhibits digestion. So anything with the sympathetic nervous system activation, you're not in rest and digest. That's parasympathetic. You are activated. You are ready to go. So your step, your body is not like, hey, I want to eat something. Like you're not relaxed. You're ready to fight, flight, you know, do all of those things. So your liver stimulates glucose release because it's going to need that energy. Your kidneys, it stimulates epinephrine and norepinephrine release. Your intestines inhibits peristalsis and secretion because you think – you know, you're back in the day under a tree and you see a lion and you need to run. Like if your body's like, oh, actually I need to use the bathroom, you're going to die, you know, because you can't, you can't stop. It will attack you. So your body is inhibiting all digestive type things um, and your bladder relaxes. So then if we look at the parasympathetic nervous system and your bladder is relaxing because you're everything's dilating then if we look at the parasympathetic nervous system so this restores the body to a state of calm this is the area of rest and digest so your pupils are going to constrict you're going to start secreting saliva you're going to have a slower heartbeat your lungs your bronchi is going to constrict you're going to be digesting you're going to stimulate bile release for that digestion um peristalsis and secretion in your intestines is going to happen and your bladder is going to contract. Then there is the enteric system which is located in the gastrointestinal tract. This connects the brain and the digestive system through nerves. It controls secretions, blood flow, hormone release, and motility, the movement of food through the digestive tract, all of which are part of the digestive process. And that is the end of the nervous system module. So make sure to, you know, do the worksheet, take the quiz, study the slides before you do those things, and I will see you in the next module. We're almost done with the anatomy and physiology section. See you there.